So here we are in iMovie, and I have a few clips on the timeline that I'm going to use to demonstrate iMovie's audio correction and enhancement tools. I'll select this first clip and go up to the toolbar above the viewer and select the speaker symbol, which is the volume tool. And we have a few controls. To the right is iMovie's audio ducking feature, labeled lower volume of other clips. Now this is for blending or mixing together your different audio tracks. If you want to know more about what this does and how to use it, check out my video on iMovie audio editing. Over to the left, we have the volume slider to increase or decrease the volume of the selected clip. Now, as I adjust this slider, you can see the waveform on the clip, it's moving up and down. So I'm increasing and decreasing the volume. Now, if you're not seeing audio waveforms in the timeline, go down and select settings. And in the menu beside audio, select show waveforms. Back up to the volume controls, to the left of the volume slider is the mute button. Selecting that mutes the audio of the selected clip. You can see if I hit that button, that the waveform on the selected clip disappears. To the left of the mute button is our first audio enhancement tool. This button that says auto. And if you hover over that button, the tooltip says automatically improve loudness. The auto loudness feature takes the average volume of the selected clip and boosts it, making it louder. So here's the clip without the auto loudness feature. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now here's the clip with auto loudness applied. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now, depending on the starting volume level of your clip, you may need to go into the clip and lower the levels to get rid of any red peaks in the waveform. Red peaks mean your audio is too high and it's distorting. Then there's the opposite situation. Your audio is really, really low. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and other social media and applying auto loudness and even raising the volume band on the clip all the way to the max still doesn't give you enough volume. Well, in that situation, you can use a little audio trick called doubling. Select the clip with the super low audio, right click or control click on it and select detach audio. The audio track is now separated from the video track. The audio track is this green track here. Then select the audio track. Then while holding down the option key on your keyboard, click and drag the audio track down to create a duplicate audio track and place that duplicate below the original track. Now you've doubled the audio track. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and other social media, which increases the volume. Interested in becoming... Now just be careful not to make the clip too loud. You'll have to use your ears to make sure that the volume of the clip matches the volume of the rest of the audio in your project because you're not going to be able to really use the waveforms anymore as a guide. All right, let's look at the other audio enhancement tools here in iMovie. I'll select my next clip. Then go back up to the toolbar above the viewer, and this time I'll select this button that looks like a waveform. This opens up iMovie's background noise reduction and equalizer tools. Let's look at reduce background noise first. This tool reduces the background noise in a clip without reducing the clip's volume. So I've got this clip in the timeline that I'll select, and it has some background noise. I'll play it. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and for other social media aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. That's a vacuum cleaner in the background. I'll select Reduce Background Noise. Now you can see on this slider over here, the default amount of noise reduction is set to 50%. Zero applies no noise reduction, where 100% is maximum noise reduction. I'm just going to start at 50, the default. Then I'll listen to the clip. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and for other social media aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. They want to... Then I'll adjust the slider up or down until the background noise is just about gone or barely noticeable. Really interested in becoming a video professional. 
they want to be able to use the video creation tools well enough to execute and share their vision. Where they don't want to be too heavy handed with noise reduction in iMovie. Honestly, the quality of this filter is not very good. It can leave your audio sounding very digital. A video professional. All right, I'll go over to the right of the toolbar and jump into the equalizer section. I'll select this little arrow to open up the equalizer menu. And you see we have a number of equalizer presets. So what these presets do is modify different frequencies in a selected clip's audio track to correct or enhance the sound. Flat means no equalization. The next one is voice enhance. Like the name suggests, this EQ preset amplifies typical vocal frequencies, usually the mids and the high frequencies, and reduces or attenuates lower frequencies that tend to muddy a voice. So I have a clip here in the timeline that I'll select, and here's the clip without voice enhance. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now I'll apply voice enhance. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. You can hear the voice really pops out, but personally, I find the sound a little too trebly and thin. The next EQ preset is Music Enhance. So I have a music clip in the timeline. I'll just play it. And now I'll apply the Music Enhance equalizer preset. Now notice how the music clip's waveform changed. So from what I can tell, Music Enhance takes the loudest sounds in the music track and lowers them a little bit, then takes the quietest sounds and boosts them reducing what's called the dynamic range of the track. So essentially you can hear more of the instruments. It's a type of compression, which actually makes Music Enhance a great EQ for voices. Here's that voice clip again with flat EQ. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now here it is with Music Enhance applied. I'm just going to bring down the volume a bit. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Kind of sounds like a radio voice, doesn't it? All right, next on the equalizer list is loudness. Now, this EQ doesn't actually increase the volume or loudness of an audio clip. What it does is it boosts or amplifies frequency ranges our ears are more sensitive to and reduces or attenuates other frequencies, making the clip sound louder. So here's that voice clip again with the flat EQ. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. And now I'll apply the loudness equalizer preset. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube or other social media platforms aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. It seems to sound louder, just have more presence. Next up is hum reduction. I have another clip in the timeline that I'll play. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. And you can hear that hum, that background hum throughout the track. That's an electrical hum. It can be caused by poor wiring, a bad connection, or a faulty electrical supply. The hum reduction preset tries to target those humming frequencies and get rid of them. So here's the clip with the hum. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. And now here's the clip with hum reduction applied. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and 
any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now these next four equalization presets are fairly self-explanatory. Bass boost amplifies lower frequencies to add body to thin sounding voices or other sounds. So here's a thin sounding clip without any EQ, with flat EQ. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now here it is with Bass Boost applied. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now Bass Reduce does the opposite. It reduces or attenuates lower frequencies, which can actually add clarity to lower, boomy sounding voices or other sounds. So here's a clip with a lot of low end or bass in it. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Sounds really boomy. Now here's that same clip with bass reduce applied. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Bass Reduce can also be helpful if you have low frequency rumbling in the background like an air conditioner or a furnace. Treble Boost amplifies the upper, mid-range and higher frequencies which can add clarity and some sparkle to a voice. So here's that clip with a lot of bass in it with flat EQ. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now here it is with the treble boost equalizer preset. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. And finally, we have treble reduce which reduces or attenuates the upper mid-range and higher frequencies. This equalizer preset is good for voices or other sounds with a lot of high frequency sibilance. You know, that hissing sound, particularly on the S's when somebody speaks. So here's a clip with a lot of high frequency sibilance in it. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now here's that clip with the treble reduce preset applied. I believe that the majority of people creating video content for YouTube and any other social media platform aren't necessarily interested in becoming a video professional. Now personally, I stay away from iMovie's audio enhancement tools as much as possible. Maybe using auto loudness on occasion? They work okay in some circumstances, but they lack any meaningful control. You have to live with the preset settings, and if you've done any work in audio, you know that it's not one size fits all.